here we're going to start doing a series of examples on how to use the ideal gas equation in chemistry. So here we have PV equals nRT, that's our ideal gas equation, and now they're asking us what is the volume of 3.4 grams of carbon dioxide, and we know that's a gas, at 60 degrees centigrade in one atmosphere. If you want carbon dioxide to turn into a solid because there's really no liquid phase of carbon dioxide in the, the typical one atmosphere condition, you have to be at about minus 80 degrees centigrade before gas carbon dioxide actually turns into a solid. Okay, so what is the volume of that much gas of carbon dioxide at 60 degrees centigrade and one atmosphere? So here's the equation. We want to solve this equation for V, divide both sides by P. So we end up with volume equals nRT divided by the pressure. So this is equal to number of moles. Well, they didn't give us a number of moles. They gave us the amount of gas in grams. So now we can think of how to convert that. And the number of moles, by definition, is equal to the mass of the sample divided by the molar mass. So m, small m, stands for the mass of the sample. Big M stands for the molar mass, the mass per mole. So N is equal to uh, 3.4 grams divided by hmm, carbon dioxide. What is the molar mass of carbon dioxide? So the molar mass is equal to, of, and I should say carbon dioxide underneath, of course, because it's not the same for every gas. CO2 is equal to, we have one carbon, which means it is 12 grams round it off, 12 grams per mole, plus two times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16 grams, and uh, so that would be per mole. All right, two times 16 is 32, plus 12 is 44, so it would be 44 grams per mole, and then you can see that grams cancel out, and one over mole denominator becomes moles. And so with the calculator, we can say 3.4, divided by 44 is equal to 0 0.0773 moles. So that's the number of moles we have in our sample, and that's what comes over here. So uh, since I'm running out of room, let me drop down a line. So this is equal to 0 0.0773 moles. Multiply times R. Now R is that gas constant, so it is 8.314 times 10. Oh, not, not time, times 10. I was thinking about another constant. 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin times the temperature. Now this said 60 degrees centigrade, but we always have to convert centigrade degrees to Kelvin degrees. So we can say that temperature is equal to, in Kelvin, is equal to the 60 degrees centigrade uh, plus 273. And of course, since we're adding that, I'm going to write it as 60 centigrade degrees because I know that centigrade degrees are the same as Kelvin degrees. That's the size of the degree plus 273 Kelvin. So when you add that together, you get 333 Kelvin. So that's the temperature in Kelvin, not in centigrade degrees. That goes in here, 333 Kelvin, and we divide the whole thing by the pressure. Now, we were given the pressure in atmospheres, so we have to convert that to standard units, which is pascals, and so it's 101,325 pascals. I know I don't need this many significant figures, but that's okay. That's the number I keep memorizing, so that's the number that ends up on the board. So I take the number of moles times 8.314 times 333 divided by 101,325 and I get a volume of 2.11 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters. And of course, if we convert that to liters, there's 1,000 liters per cubic meter. So that's 1,000 liters per 1 cubic meter. And so that gives us 2.11 liters. And that's the volume of that particular gas. Now, does that make sense? I'd like to do a quick check. And I know that typically, either under STP conditions, the volume of one mole of gas is 22.4 liters. So this is a little bit less than a tenth of that. So, does that make sense? Well, let's see here. They gave us 
less than a tenth of a mole of the gas because one mole has a mass of 44 grams so they gave us less so we expect far less volume because we start out with far less gas but then the temperature was a little bit higher than STP conditions but not that much higher only 60 degrees over STP conditions so yes you would expect a slightly greater volume for that and the atmosphere was one atmosphere which is standard condition so it's in the ballpark I know that even if I did it wrong I wouldn't be that far off with that number so a quick check sometimes helps you figure out if you're on the, if you're in the ballpark or not so that's how we use the ideal gas equation to come up with the volume of a gas at a particular temperature at a particular pressure and sometimes they give you the gas not in how many moles of the gas you have but in terms of how many grams and you'll have to convert to moles first and that's how we do that